What's up everyone, welcome to part 5 of our pandas tutorial series and in this one we're going to look at ways of doing simple filtering on our data frame. So what you see here is some stock prices and the various types of filters we can use to smooth out our data. So in this one we're going to go through a couple different ones, how to set it up, how to do it, what the different features are and things like that. So let's get started. So the focus of this video is going to be the rolling function. So for a given data frame, we can call rolling, specify a few parameters, and what it's going to provide is rolling window calculations. So that might sound a little confusing, but basically what we're going to do is take a data frame called our data frame dot rolling. We're going to specify the window length, and then also we're going to specify the window type. And then we'll also specify an aggregator such as mean, sum, min, things like that to aggregate the data. And then what that will return is a new data frame with hopefully some nicely smooth data. So let's jump over to a new notebook and see how this works. We're going to start by importing pandas as pd. Then we're also going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And then the back end that we're going to use for matplotlib, we're going to use the nbag. So what nbag does is allows us to have the controls to zoom and pan. Those controls we're used to seeing. So we're going to use that back end. And then the data set we're going to use is the five-year stock price from Kaggle. This is the same data set that we used in the previous video. So if you followed along the previous one, you probably already have it, but if not, I'll add a link in the description where you can download from Kaggle. It's just a CSV file with a bunch of stock prices. So we're going to create our DF and it's going to be pd.readcsv. And the file name is going to be called all stocks five year.csv. And then we're going to specify the index column and that's going to be date. And then I believe we can just say parse dates equals true. And then if I do df dot head and I spelled this wrong, I cool. So yeah, this is the correct data set. And you can see here the dates are all parsed because the index column has the column title dropped a little bit. So that means it's parsing it and everything's all good. Cool. So now what I'm going to do is filter this data set just so we have the Apple data. And this time I'm going to use the correct flag for Apple. So I'm going to create a new data frame. I'm going to call it DF underscore AAPL for Apple. And then it's just going to be our previous DF, but we're going to filter it for the DF when the name is equal to AAPL. So what this is doing is only returning entries where the name is equal to AAPL. So now if I run this dot AAPL dot head, you can see we're only getting the entries where the stock is Apple. Cool. So now what I'm going to do is specify a few constants. So the first one's going to be called window. Let's call it win length or just win len. And that's going to be equal to 10. So this is how long the window is going to be. Then I'm going to specify a list of window types. So I'm going to call it win type. And the types that we're going to use, the first one is going to be none. Next one's going to be boxcar. Next one's going to be triang. Next one we'll do blackman. Then we'll do Hamming, and finally we'll do nut, nut all. And there's a few other ones you can check in the rolling documentation, but um, I'm just gonna use these ones for now just so we can see what the these filters look like. So those are gonna be our win types and fix that. Cool, and the next thing I wanna do is let's plot the open data. So we'll start by just showing what the open data for this stock looks like. So I'm gonna do AX is equal to DF underscore AAP, AAPL. And then the stock I'm gonna do is the open. 
And then I'm just going to call plot and I'm going to specify the fig size and it's going to be equal to, I'll do seven by four. And also we'll just give it a title. We'll call it um, AAPL open price. Finally, I'm going to do a PLT dot show. And I'm also going to do um, PLT dot type layout just so it um, expands the size of the the plotting area to fill in a little more white space. So we'll go ahead and run that. So here you can see our open price. We go from, I don't know, early 2013 all the way up to a few months ago in 2017. So this is our raw unfiltered open data set. Now let's look at ways we can filter this using the rolling filter. So I'm going to start by just looking at some of the default settings for the filter just to show you the mechanics and how the syntax works. So I'm going to come up here and then what I'm going to do is create a new data frame. I'm going to call it df underscore aapl uh, underscore role. And what that's going to be equal to is df underscore aapl. And then what we're going to do is call rolling. So now what we would pass is our window length, our window type, and those are the only parameters we're going to touch for now. But I'm going to leave the window type as default, which is none. And the only thing I'm going to specify is the window length. So let's just say win, win length for now. And now if I were to print this out, just so you can see what this thing returns, df underscore aapl roll, you can see that it's just this rolling object um, with a window length and some other parameters, center, axes, stuff like that. So it's not actually any data, it's just like this object. So we need to specify a little bit more. And what we need to specify is the aggregator. So an aggregator is, think of it as like a statistic. So either your sum, your mean, your min, your max, things like that. It has to apply the filter in a certain way. So what I'm gonna do is right here, I'm just going to call mean. So when we call mean, now we're going to get a data frame back. So just to, just to show you, I'm just going to call um, head on this. And you can see here, we've got the first few entries of our data frame. And you can see here that the first few ones are going to be NAN or not a number. And the reason for that is because in order to return a value, our window length is 10, so we need to have 10 previous data points in order to in order to calculate that point. So basically, if I call, let's just call a few more points. So I'm just going to call the whole data frame. So you can see here we've got nine consecutive points where it's NAN. And then on the 10th one, we can now actually calculate a value. So this value is going to be the average of all 10 previous ones. So it's just an average. And then here, this one is going to be the average of back to here. And you can see it's just this moving window. So think of a window of length 10. You put the window over 10 points, and then you take the average. And then that is the new value at that point. So that's why they call it a rolling average or a rolling mean. Cool. So that's how we get our data. Now let's take a look at it. So I'm going to come up here and we can just quickly do um, on our data frame, we can just call plot. And then what this will do, let me change these. So now, oh, so oops, I didn't specify which one I want. So here, let's just call open. So here you can see we're getting our original raw open data, which is the blue and the orangey color. That's our rolling data or our filter data. So you can see it's a lot smoother. And if I were to zoom in on it, you can see that a lot of that fast variation in the raw data is all smoothed out. And you also might notice is there's a bit of an offset. So here's our raw data. And then it takes a little bit of time before we get to our filter data. 
And that's an artifact or property of the rolling filter because we have to use the previous values to get to the next one. It creates sort of an offset or a shift. So everything is sort of shifted to the right. But in general, you can see that it, it basically just smooths out the line so you can better approximate trends. It's good for line fitting, things like that. So now let's look at the different types of filters. Now what I'm gonna do is loop over our wind type and then create a new data frame and then plot it in our plot below so we can see what each one looks like. So I'm gonna leave this one here, the original plot, untouched. And then we'll do for win in win underscore type. What we'll do is let's tab this over, bring it up a little bit. But so yeah, we're going to create a new data frame and we'll just call it roll. And what we need to do is we'll keep the win length the same, but then the win type is going to be equal to win. So you can see each time we're gonna do a new win type that's in our list here. So then what we need to do, I just wanna rename the column titles just so we can get the legend and see what each plot is and it has a proper legend and naming. So the way I'm gonna rename it is, I'm just gonna call df underscore aapl underscore role. And then we're gonna to need to do a list comprehension. So I'm just gonna to come to a new line for this. And the way I'm gonna name it is gonna be three things. So I'm gonna do three entries and then we're gonna format it. And the first one is just gonna be, I'm gonna call it call for columns. And then the next one's gonna be the win, the win length. And the next one is going to be the window type, which we call win. And then, um, oops. then it's going to be for call in df aapl underscore rolling or underscore roll. And then it's going to be the columns. What this returns is all the column types or the column names. And so you remember those are open, high, low, close, volume, etc. So we're just going to be appending the window length and the window type. So instead of just open, it's gonna be open underscore 10, underscore none, boxcar, things like that, just so we know the, the window type from it. Cool, so that's gonna rename it. And then we just need to plot it. And then also, since we renamed it, we're gonna to need to redo this a bit. So it'll be this here, and then we're gonna format it. And the first one's gonna be, actually we can just do open, and then the format will be the win length, and then the last one will be the window type or win. And then in order to show the legend, we'll come out of the for loop, and we'll just call ax.legend, and I'm just going to make the font size a little bit smaller since the since I'm kind of zoomed in, so just to make more room. And I think that should be it. So now if we run this, we got an error. And what did I do wrong? Okay, I figured out what the problem was. So instead of redefining the data frame itself, we need to be calling columns. So now if I run this, what we're doing is actually renaming the column. So we're setting the columns equal to the reformatted versions of the names. So moving on, here you can see, now we're plotting all of the windows that we have in our window type list. And right now you can see they're kind of all on top of each other. So there's not, when we're zoomed out, we can't really tell the difference. So let's go ahead and zoom in just to take a look at the differences between them. So for this section where it's kind of changing a lot, you can see here we've got the none type is probably covered somewhere under all of this. And then the one that seems to be a little bit closer, has less of an offset, is the, the box car. But actually, you know, here it doesn't reach quite as high. It's a lot more smoothed out. So the box car, I think, is going to be a little bit of a harder averaging. So more of an offset, more error between the 
the raw data and the filtered data. And so I, I would say probably this Blackman one is pretty good. You can see that it, when it goes high, it goes the highest of them. And when it goes low, it goes the lowest of them. But in general, they're all returning very similar results, just minor tweaks. So in general, you can probably go with any of these. If you're just looking for something to make your plot a little bit more visually appealing, just to smooth it out, it really doesn't matter which one you go with. But if you're doing some, you know, more analytic stuff and you're really trying to dig into your data, you might need to explore to try and find the best one. So I think that's going to be it for this video. Just a simple one on the rolling feature. In the next one, I don't really have anything planned. So if you guys have any questions or would like to see a video covering a topic in Pandas, leave a comment below. I'll try my best to, you know, make a video on it. Pandas is like a super big and comprehensive API or library. So there's tons of stuff to talk about it. Um, I'll try and come up with another one, but yeah, stay tuned for the next one. Code, I'll post this code up to my GitHub so you can play around with it. And yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.